Okay, we're back again. We're going to get started here. Um, I want you to, to keep in mind that the objective here is living at, it, or, or immersing ourselves in the natural world as opposed to just visiting for a brief period of time or trying to make a summit attempt. That means that if the weather is really foul, my objective or my goal is to be in a climate, not climate controlled, but a place where I can manipulate the environment to keep me warmer. I'm not going to go out in driving rain or an extreme snowstorm, but rather I'm going to be next to a fire in a shelter, relaxing uh, and letting that weather pass. So um, just keep in mind that that like light and fast, but sacrificing durability um, is not what I'm after. I will take on more weight um, for durability uh, and, and for repairability, because, you know, you, you rip a, a jacket in the field, uh, it's kind of done for the most part. But if I'm out somewhere for a month and I rip something, I want to be able to repair it. So let's just start with footwear because I think it's super, super um, um, important. I am functioning on clothing that I would be wearing this time of year into probably late December. Um, and then from probably uh, February on, um, the summer months, as odd as it may seem, uh, it doesn't really matter what you wear because it's hot um, and I'm more concerned with, with insects at that point. But at that point, a t-shirt and, um, a t-shirt and shorts is, 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 is just fine. Although I think it's, it's probably worth mentioning that if you're in an area where you're doing a lot of bushwhacking, you're off trail, um, shorts become kind of uncomfortable because you're getting scratched up by uh, kind of that forest understory and uh, blackberries, raspberries, and things like that. But let's start with footwear. So this is a, a footwear that you probably recognize. This is the L.L. Bean hunting shoe. I grew up with this boot. Um, it comes in, in a couple different lengths. You can get kind of like the knee-high one, or you can get the duck boots where they're, you know, they're really shallow. Uh, L.L. Bean has been... Um, a place for uh, of quality for a long time. Only recently, um, it came to be that when I sent these boots back, because I, I do blow them out, I've had quite a number of pairs, um, all of a sudden I am being charged, which is a little bit of a bummer. Uh, I, would, I would tell you that there are actually other companies that make a, an equally good boot. This boot was designed and it came directly from the Northeast. Um, it's got a gum sole, so it, 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 it um, doesn't slip. Um, readily anyhow and it's got a rubber bottom natural real rubber on the bottom and then a leather upper um, so we're dealing with natural products here um, and if you've spent any time in the north woods you know that they are boggy and swampy we also get really heavy dews so wearing really lightweight footwear um, when you're off trail doesn't make sense you're gonna get wet I guess I would counteract that by saying that sometimes it's best just to go uh, um, either totally barefoot or with a sandal, not a flip-flop, uh, but a strap sandal if you're just going to get soaked. But um, this, this boot allows me to, to move light and fast. They're not cumbersome. They have a very un, uh, a narrow toe, toe box. They're excellent for stocking. They're very quiet. Um, and when treated properly with, with uh, snow sear or mink oil, um, they're more or less waterproof, although you'll get some leakage on either side. Um, they're, they're a timeless design and actually have become quite popular, I guess, in, in the front country as well. Certainly not why, where, uh, uh, why I wear them. Uh, again, light, quiet, waterproof, comfortable, um, and, and quite durable. I do blow out the back here. I usually blow out this seam. I'll send it back to L.O. Bean and for 14 bucks, uh, um, it gets fixed. And, you know, I, obviously I have other stuff than, than what I'm showing, but these are kind of the MVPs that I want to offer uh, you. All right, these are what I, I, I absolutely love these. These are extra tough boots, um, formerly made in Michigan. Um, unfortunately, I'm pretty sure they're only made uh, overseas now. They were made in the United States till very recently. I was very disappointed to see that they had um, uh, changed their manufacturing era. They're oftentimes called Alaska fish, fish boots um, um, or the Alaskan tennis shoe. And yes, I got turned on to these when I lived in Alaska. Uh, 
they are an absolute staple on fishing vessels. However, um, woods people of all uh, um, walks of life uh, uh, wear them as well. And I have recently seen them become more popular in the lower 48. Um, seeing it in the show, uh, Stephen Ranella's Meat Eater, they're all wearing these boots. Uh, why? Well, it's really pretty simple. It is, again, 100% natural rubber with a gum sole. It's a chemical resistant, although you're not getting many, many, many chemicals, but with a gum non-stick sole. So it's a similar sole to the L.L. Bean boot. Um, and inside is a thin membrane of neoprene, which gives it a little bit of insulation, which is actually really nice. Um, the L.L. Bean boots don't have insulation. These do have a, a little bit. They give you a little more protection up the calf so I can fjord a river or go through some muck with ease. Also, what's really nice is I can roll down the tops if I'm really hot. Um, just like so, kind of like a fireman's boot. And you can really roll them down quite, quite low. I would say that, the, um, that there are very little drawbacks. They also, while not as... Um, uh, not as ergonomically nimble, I would say, as the L.L. Bean boot, I could still play a game of soccer in these. And um, probably not going to be the MVP on the field, but uh, they're, 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 they're a great boot. They're not super bulky. I can dry them quickly. Some of the more heavily insulated um, boots that we see, like muck boots or what have you, uh, don't dry as well. I find them way more durable than lacrosse boots. Um, the rubber lasts longer. The rubber is kind of an oiled rubber. It's kind of worn off on these for now, but... Uh, you know, I've probably owned 10 pairs of these boots, and I'll probably own 10, 10 uh, more. Um, extra tough neoprene Alaskan fish boots, uh, absolutely a, um, a must-have. Um, so our base layer, I can run through that really quickly. So here's base layer, just a top and a bottom. Top and bottom. Uh, these are Merida wool. Uh, in the late 1990s, the technology arrived where um, manufacturers could actually weave really fine merino wool um, into a durable uh, garment prior to that. They just couldn't get a tight enough weave for it to, to kind of uh, stay together. So it was uh, relegated to just kind of sweaters and things like that. These are form-fitting, um, very, very effective um, Merino wool bot, uh, tops and bottoms, and and there's a bunch of companies that make them, but Smart Wool really jumps to mind as probably the leader. Um, but there, you know, there's there's um, a bunch of other ones out there, and there's there's knockoff companies, uh, which I'm not afraid to wear. You can get for for even cheaper. They they have a a, a shocking sticker price um, when you see what they cost. And to be honest with you, I use my stuff really hard. This stuff doesn't have a huge uh, um, shelf life, if you will. They're not overly durable. Um, but there is no, no, absolutely zero competition when it comes to a, a better long john. Synthetic uh, um, long underwear smell really bad. Not as good for the landscape. When I'm all done with this, if I can't send it back to the company, and trust me, I execute that option all the time. I can bury it in the backyard and it's going to be decomposed in a couple of years. That's not going to happen with a synthetic uh, uh, Under Armour, for example. Uh, again, they control odor um, and um, they have more insulative properties. They're warm when wet. Um, they don't provide a lot of friction. Um, and I'll probably be talking about more about wool in the future. So let's move on. I do dress in layers uh, for obvious reasons. I can layer up or layer down depending on whatever, um, whatever the situation requires, and I am cognizant to do so. C.C. Uh, Filson out of Seattle is definitely a staple in um, the bushcraft world and has been since the gold rush. Um, there are smaller companies that are probably better than Filson, and you know, I kind of have some residual guilt about talking about consumerism in general because this that is the, that is antithetical to this class. But um, I will tell you that Filson um, has been very good about repairing um, equipment that I've sent back. I've never spent a dime in repairing things, and they've get, sent me, and they've repaired a lot of clothing for me. It is quite expensive, um, but it has a lifetime guarantee. Um, 
and uses timeless classic design. So I'm a big fan of oiled canvas. The reason for that is that um, kind of your heavier canvas style pants, let's just say Carhartts, they're great, but they absorb a lot of water. Oiled canvas has a, a, um, a wax covering that you can vary in, in its application. The heavier the wax, the stiffer the garment. Um, but you can, as you can see in these pants, I have different areas that are waxed at different uh, uh, levels. And um, they, they are extremely durable. Um, I can walk through wet grass um, or a beaver bog, what have you, and I'm not gonna get soaked at least immediately. They handle themselves very well against fire. Uh, they are abrasion resistant. Um, I've had these for quite a number of years and uh, although they look kind of dirty, they're pretty much as good as the day I bought them. I did have to send them back to get, um, I, I like overalls because I've got a skinny rear end and um, that's embarrassing when you're teaching um, as your pants fall off. Um, but so, so I like having the, the overalls here and the elastic went, I just sent them back to, to Filson and they came back um, within a couple weeks, brand new uh, uh, elastic suspenders and I didn't have to pay a thing. Now wax canvas is, is, is really big. It's windproof, um, very water resistant, abrasion proof. Um, there's really nothing that comes close to it. So if you get a synthetic kind of really lightweight climbing or hiking pant, uh, that's awesome. Except for as soon as you're bushwhacking, you're going to rip it. Um, and you need a heavier duty pant. There's just, there's just no doubt about it. Um, and if you get a really heavy duty canvas pant that isn't waxed, well, you're just going to absorb so much water that you're going to be very uncomfortable, clammy, and heavier than you would be uh, otherwise. Also, Filson uh, offers um, lightweight wool pants. This is their whipcord pant. Um, and this is if it's, it's a little colder, I might throw on these. They're quiet. Um, I also want you to notice that the colors are all color neutral. I'm not looking to stick out and be loud. That's not what I'm about. I'm about immersing into the landscape. So I'm even thinking about the, um, the colors that I'm wearing. Um, not only for camouflage, but also just because I, I just want to ensure that my attitude is not one of dominance, but, but rather immersion. So these are a lightweight wool pant. Wool retains 70% of its insulation value when wet. Um, wool is quiet and with a good quality wool, a good weave, it, it, is, it is durable. So. Uh, the whipcord pant would be probably a close second to those bibs. Um, if it was really a colder morning, I probably would go with the, with the whipcord pant. Um, moving on, you're going to notice the theme here. I'll wear a heavy canvas shirt. Um, you know, cotton, there's, there's, there's this uh, common, uh, um, I don't know what they call it, colloquialism, um, called there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. And I take a real issue with that because um, when mother nature wants to extinguish you, she's going to. Uh, and that I think is just a marketing ploy. Um, and you also hear that cotton kills. And while that's largely the case, cotton is usually not the best um, type of fabric to wear when you're in the back country. Some cotton is just fine. In fact, canvas is cotton. So in fact, this is these, these car, uh, sorry, these uh, Filson bibs are cotton. It's just they have a tighter weave and they're made of a superior product than just your average t-shirt. So there are canvas or cotton shirts that are awesome, but, um, and I probably should grab one to show you, but right now this is just a button up shirt. This one's got a pretty cool story uh, behind it. I do recommend um, Pendleton Woolen Mills. They're, they're out of Oregon, Pendleton, Oregon. Readily found on eBay or in stores. They make an excellent wool shirt. I think they're stylish, but that's if you like plaid, uh, like I do, um, and button-up shirts. This is not from this. This is, this is kind of a, a, a more special to me. I bought this from an Inuit woman in Alaska who actually took my measurements when I was um, in my mid-20s. And um, she actually, she had kind of these swatches of... of 
fabric and asked me to pick out a fabric that I would like. And then she came back uh, 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 a couple of months later with this shirt for me and I went and picked it up. I have replaced the buttons, but as you can see, it's, it's really, it's really hand stitched in there. But again, Pendleton makes a great shirt. Woolrich makes a great shirt. Just a 100% wool button up shirt. Um, Filson makes the Alaskan Guide shirt. If wool just seems a little bit overkill and you want something maybe a touch lighter, um, the Alaskan Cotton Guide shirt, it's 100% cotton, but it's a tighter weave cotton, doesn't absorb moisture um, like cheaper cotton does. So from there, uh, just a, a, an absolute fan of just a 100% wool sweater. Um, this is gonna go over my base layer, then my wool sweater, um, or sorry, my wool shirt. Again, any wool sweater is gonna do. I like Pendleton. This is uh, because it's washable. Um, this is their, uh, the washable, just their, their regular sweater but out of washable wool, um, which is pretty nice to have. So it doesn't shrink as quickly as it might otherwise. It still does shrink. Um, but uh, they're, you know, again, found pretty readily used and, um, and at thrift, uh, thrift stores. And certainly there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, other types of, of wool sweaters that are, that are just as good. Um, I may throw in, if it's real cold, on top of that, a vest. Uh, I like using the vest because it, 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 this is a wool vest and it's going to keep me warm. Again, I'm not going in deep cold here. I kind of have a whole new series for deep cold where I'm wearing even bulkier wool stuff. Um, but this is for, like I said, from this time of year, although it's a little warm today, uh, this time of year to you know probably the end of December, depending on which way the weather pendulum swings. So... Um, Nice wool vest, keeping my core warm. Um, and then lastly, uh, without a doubt, the Johnson shirt jack, which comes in your classic buffalo check or your green check. This is, um, oh, I forget what this is called, but it's kind of got a, oh, it's herringbone. There we go. A green herringbone pattern. Um, this is my jacket that's going, that's going on the top. And with that, I'm going to be plenty, plenty warm. So, um, and I, I am, again, this, I'm hitting all of those basic tenements of what I need. I want to be um, purchasing clothing that is durable, repairable, quiet, um, and is manufactured in, in a socially conscious and environmental conscious way. Um, not quite done for real foul weather. Uh, I have, this is made by Empire Canvas. They're a really small company. Um, Literally, this is, this is made in uh, somebody's garage, um, but this is wax cotton again. It is waterproof, it is heavy, it is beefy, it's ready to take on the bush, to live in the bush. I don't wear it that much, but um, certainly I would, um, or certainly I do when the weather really turns bad. And although it's quite heavy, you want it when it's in your pack. So uh, to kind of finish that off, I think it's super important to mention headgear. Uh, again, I like wool. This is and this is you know any wool cap, but this is um, a Mackinac Filson Mackinac hat. You've heard Filson quite a bit here today. Um, it's got a quilted uh, um, inside. Although I can wear it in you know I can wear this in seventy degree temps, um, and it's kind of like a baseball cap. But I can also wear it as the as the mercury dips much lower than that, uh, and it does have ear flaps. Um, it's got a little short bill keeping the sun out of my eyes. Um, you really can't, you really can't, you can't beat it. Um, I call it the heart pro model. Um, and then lastly, I get a really, I have a really chunky beanie. This is a Cowichan, um, beanie that, that is, um, handmade in British Columbia or Alaska or they're from uh, Pacific Northwestern native peoples. This has lots of lanolin still on it. Lanolin is the nap, is, is the, uh, oils that are naturally produced by uh, ungulates, sheep, um, or even mountain goats, um, and keeps maintains that it doesn't shrink too rapidly and has a lot of water repellency. 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 So if it's really cold, I put on this hat, and I really have nothing to worry about. It is not lightweight. Yeah, this thing is insulative, uh, waterproof, and really, really, really hard to beat. So I think that it's important that you recognize. That all of these garments that I showed you were born out of a landscape 
where people use them for their vitality, not just recreational purposes. While we may be using them for recreational purposes, the, the, the inventor of the Alaska fish boot needed these boots to function well on a fishing vessel. Um, the Cowichan uh, um, beanie comes from kayakers who are hunting seals um, and, 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 and beluga whales uh, in, in a time uh, before now, certainly. Uh, the Mackinac hat comes from the trappers of uh, the upper Midwest in Wisconsin, Minnesota, um, so on and so forth. Uh, Johnson wool made right here in Johnson, Vermont, meeting the needs of foresters and loggers for, for, for over a generation. Uh, and certainly now is a staple of, classic staple of, of classic uh, Vermont style deer hunting. Um, again, uh, uh, this tight knit vest for another insulative layer. layer. The, uh, the Pendleton clothing is inspired by the Rocky Mountains um, and the upper uh, uh, Pacific Northwest where you're dealing with extreme cold and um, yet it needs to stand up to the test of the of the trailer of the woods so all of this comes from that bioregional uh, uh, idea of humans adapting to their environment as opposed to attempting to force the environment to adapt to them i have probably um another segment and um Hopefully you're enjoying this. I wish you were here in person so we could get some questions, but uh, that's just the way it is.